What's up, you guys? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for P Valley, you guys. Season two, episode number nine. Episode is titled Snow. All right, you guys. So before we go ahead and just jump into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel, and you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, I need you guys to do me that solid favor and you know stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those post notifications. And with that out the way, you guys, without further ado, let's get into P-Valley, y'all. Down in the valley where the girls get naked. If you throwing bands, then you know she gonna shake it. One, two, break them. Three, four, break them. These niggas grind hard, but these bitches grind harder. Climbing up the pole just to get out the bottom. The crowd below. Stay ready for the show. The pimps, the dough, don't let it take your soul. We make ballin' on the sky look easy. Look at my bitches gangster walking on the ceiling. Green on the floor, money talk, can you hear me? The word is so addicting, the dreams is expensive. I'm done, you guys. Next week, I might give it to you the fourth song, but that's it. All right, you guys, so this episode, oh my God. The finale is next week, you guys, and oh, we are the finale is going to be one for the books. I can give you that. I can tell you that right now. Like, the finale is going to be bananas. We'll start off with the beginning of the episode. So, the beginning of the episode, we see Andre. So, you guys know Andre is running for mayor of Chuckalisa. And I was wondering this after last week's review. I was like, so... Because when you first... See, when, when you realize it at the beginning of last week's episode, I think they were still, like, in the... They weren't even... It was, it was months before the election so i was like they're gonna have to speed this up so that way we can get to the election and i figured that they would so we see andre he has done a ad you know a campaign ad and he's enlisted some of the girls from down there at the pink right so with that that has you know catapulted him in the polls so it's the day before election day right so he is ahead of wayne in the polls but to, you know things can change in a blink of an eye when it comes to you know those campaigns so we see, you know, he's, he's doing an interview and, you know, this, you know, the girls from the bank are with him. Then you hear a big loud thumping in the background. And who is it? Pastor Patrice Woodbine on a truck. And baby, when I tell you Patrice Woodbine, she was dancing. She was swinging around that pole just to dance. And they were like, Mercedes must have got it from her mama. Baby, when I tell you she was doing the damn thing and then she had one of them money guns and she's, she just started shooting at all the money. So that was the money that Corbin had. You guys remember, Corbin had gave us some money in, in the end of last week's episode. So that was the money that Corbin gave. She was just like, hell, I'm going to give it back to the people. So after that, um, I'm going to keep talking about them. So I'm going to group all of them together. So it's going to be Keyshawn. It's going to be Keyshawn and um, Autumn. So we do see Autumn and Keyshawn because Autumn was with Corbin and you know Corbin and Andre them so we see them at the paint and Keyshawn was like so you've been staying here she's like yeah you know I can keep my money because I ain't got to pay no rent so we find out that you know Keyshawn has gotten her passport she's bought her tickets with cash money and you know she's packed up everything and the kids are staying with her sister because she's going to be at the club late tonight and the interview that Derek went on Derek actually got the job so Derek is going to be working late and Autumn was like, okay, that's good. That's good. So then, you know, Keyshawn was like, how did you know that Chuck Elisa could be a home for you? She says, it's not. You know, she says, depending on how this casino referendum goes, either I'll be a rich woman or I'll be a really dumb bitch. Honestly, you guys, I think Autumn's going to be a dumb bitch. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. I think she's going to be a dumb bitch. So then Keyshawn was like, you know, I, 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 you know, she's, what is Uncle Clifford going to do? And Autumn was like, don't worry about her. You worry about yourself. And honestly, as much as I can't stand Autumn sometimes, I agree with Autumn. Girl, don't worry about Uncle Clifford. Uncle Clifford has put herself in the situations that she's in. You worry about you and your kids and getting the hell away from that nutcase, Derek. So then um, at the she, at the Keyshawn, so Keyshawn left with Autumn. And she bumped into um, Diamond. So Diamond was in the kitchen. And, you know, he was like, she's like, oh, I know you was in here. And then he said, you want me to fill up your water bottle? She says, yes. So he fills up her water bottle. And she still has that necklace on that he gave her last season. And she's telling him it does work. 
So then Big Bone, Big Bone is going to be a problem. Big Bone is going to be a problem. So Big Bone, you know, she's like, Diamond, are those wings finished yet? You know, she might be thirsty, but I'm hungry. I was like, ooh, this ain't going to go well. This is not going to go well. So then we later see Big Bone. So Big Bone, she now twice in this episode, Big Bone is looking at her phone and she's swiping through her photo gallery and she's looking at photos of she and Diamond. So Keyshawn was looking down at her phone and so was Big Bone. So she bumped into her and Big Bone was like, watch where the fuck you going? I was like, bitch, you now Keyshawn might piss me off, but I'm like, bitch, you watch where you going. You was looking down and so was she. She said, I ain't see. She said, I don't know how. Girl, if I'm looking down at my phone, I'm not paying you no attention. So Keyshawn says, you know, we haven't been properly introduced to each other. She said, we might not have been properly introduced to each other. But, oh, but I've heard about you. She said, these walls talk, these walls, they whisper. So she was like, well, you know, the thing about those walls, they might not always be telling the truth. And she was like, well, you know, I heard that you leave in town tomorrow. And she was like, it wasn't much that she could say. So then I do want to pref- I do want to talk about something else. So at the end of the episode, we see Whisper, not Whisper, Big Bone. Big Bone was on the back of the motorcycle. And once again, she is looking through the photo gallery, right? And she stops at this one particular picture where she took a picture of Diamond's necklace. Now I know a lot of people, and I, I'm starting to believe it now. I'm starting to see it. She is of some, people believe she's of some relation to montavious i can see it you guys it's something not right about that damn big bone i got my good eye on big bone so then we see autumn so she was talking to nineveh right and she was like is that the flaws that you're gonna be selling the girls tonight she's like yep so autumn hands nineveh some money she's like go down to the you got time go down to the rainbow and get something that i said rainbow baby rainbow okay i guess so, Autumn had to run to the bathroom to throw up. I was like, oh, shit, this heifer is pregnant. And Whisper comes by and said, you ready for twins? I said, twins? Whoo, girl. So, I want to go ahead and just get this out of the way because I'm wrapping, I'm going I'm to include them all together. So, they were at the paint for the opening, right? I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. They were at the paint for the opening and... Andre and her, Autumn, they ran into each other. And I'll talk about it a little deeper in in the review. They eventually left, went back to his room. They make an out, open a door. Who was at the door? Who is actually sitting there waiting for them? His wife. So that's that. And then at the end of the episode, Uncle Clifford, you know, she came into the, um, the locker room. Um, Keyshawn had written something in lipstick on the, 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 the vanity and Uncle Cliff was like so you were just going to leave and not say bye to a bitch she didn't really say that that's me putting a little stank on it but um, she was like you know Uncle Clifford talked to her and she told her like hey I don't ever want to see your pretty face around here anymore unfortunately you guys I don't think that she's going to go far I don't see it I don't see, I don't see her going far I feel like something is going to draw her back I don't know if it's going to be Big Bone. I don't know if it's going to be Diamond. I don't know if it's going to be that crazy ass Derek. But something is going to draw Keyshawn back. Mark my words. But let's pause here, you guys, and let's move forward. All right, you guys. So before we go ahead and get into the opening of the paint, I want to briefly talk about Mercedes. So I'm going to talk about this a little deeper in just a few minutes. But I want to talk about the fact that Mercedes, when they were doing their routines, she got mad and she left out at one point. And I'll talk about why she left out. <clears throat> but Uncle, <clears throat> Uncle Clifford, she followed behind her. Mercedes had got a text message, and it was from Farrah. So Farrah was telling her to come down, some you know, come to somewhere. So Mercedes did eventually go to where Farrah asked her to go. And when she got there, it was an art exhibit. And you guys remember a few episodes ago when, remember that episode when Farrah had text, had text Mercedes from Coach's phone, and Mercedes thought it was Coach. And she went there and Farrah was, remember, Farrah was taking the pictures of Mercedes, right? So Farrah has blown all these pictures up and she has an art exhibit and the art exhibit is titled The Mercedes Experience. And I will say, whoever did those photos, amazing job. Like they did 
amazing with those photos. I loved them. And Mercedes was even, you know, kind of like, damn. And when she got to the exhibit, the people were like, you know, people were just actually giving her praise. The women were, no one was judging her. Everyone was like, you know, that's a talent. What she's doing, like, I can't even hold it that long. My ass would have done fail. So Mercedes was good with that. So Farrah went up to Mercedes and Farrah told Mercedes that, you know, she, she around, in a roundabout way, she apologized to Mercedes for not really standing up for her the last time they were together when they had the threesome with Coach. And Farrah told Mercedes that she is divorcing Coach. And Mercedes was like, you leaving all that money? She's like, sometimes money is not all that it's cracked up to be, basically. So, <clears throat> so then Mercedes told Farrah that, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> Mercedes told Farrah that when she was on the pole, she was really shifting all of her weight from her right side to her left side because she never thought that she was going to get back on the pole because of what happened with her. And she was like, wow. She's like, remember, my mommy never get into a fight with you. She says, I probably wouldn't hit you. She said, would you fuck me again? And Mercedes says, no, that was business and it wasn't pleasure. But then she says, you know, it was some pleasure to it. Mercedes, girl, you like Farrah. Go ahead and be with Farrah. Speaking of um, Mercedes, well, actually speaking of, talking about Mercedes, Brandy. Did you guys see Brandy? She, um, this past week, Tiana Taylor did a show and Brandy performed with um, Tiana Taylor. Brandy is an, I mean, I know she's a dancer. Girl is a, 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 a tremendous talent. Tremendous talent. That's all I got to say. Love her, love her, love her. All right, you guys, let's pause here and get over to the pike. All right, you guys, so we are at the pink. So we see Whisper, Roulette, Mercedes, and Keyshawn. So they are going over their routines. And you see Mercedes as she's climbing up the pole. And when she was climbing up the pole, I'm like, Mercedes is struggling to get up that pole. Like, you can see it. She's, and, and when she said what she said to Farrah, I was able to see it because she said this to Farrah after she was at the pink. And that's when I started to think about it. I'm like, that's why she looks so awkward. Mercedes is climbing the pole, but what she's doing is, yes, she's climbing with both, you know, her, her she's got to use both, you know, hands and arms and stuff, but she's putting more pressure on the left to get up there. And it's really evident what Mercedes is doing now that, now after she said it, and I go back and think about it, I'm like, you can definitely see what Mercedes is doing. But while she's doing that, Mercedes, she looks... Um, it just it's just it looks sloppy honestly and i know it's not sloppy she's just trying to you know put more weight on this arm but she's struggling at the same time and at one point she was trying to she was on that pole and she they they her in mississippi did they move but then she was she was losing it she was losing her grip and Keyshawn hopped her ass off and so when she hopped off mercedes came down and when Mercedes came down, that is when Roulette said to her, um, she told her, you know, you should have got back on. She said, you spooked. You should have got back on that pole right after it happened. Honestly, I have to agree with Roulette in this situation. Because now Mercedes is at a point where she's trying to push herself. I get it. Give yourself some, give yourself some time to heal, right? But once you feel back to yourself, like at least at 80 percent, hop your ass back on that pole and try to, you know, try to condition your body back to the pole. But now Mercedes is, you know, pushing herself and, you know, just trying to go full force into the situation. And it's not, you know, it's not what it do. So they talking about, you know, um, Mercedes says, you know, Mercedes and Roulette at one point got into it. She said, bitch, I'll fuck you up. And she said, I'd like to see you try it. And she said, I'd like to play Russian roulette. <clears throat> so then, you know, Whisper made a little comment. And, you know, <clears throat> she said, and Whisper was like, this typically happens. And, you know, you know, roulette's like, this better not hit my money. So then Autumn comes up and she has a suggest, you know, she's talking about, because roulette said that there are four hitters. Well, Autumn says there's only four one hitter technically and Mercedes is like L let me guess it's Keyshawn and yeah it's Keyshawn so Keyshawn you know Keyshawn says well you know because she says only person that's able to pack this out at 50% is Keyshawn 
And Keyshawn was like, well, how about we, you know, make, you know, make it more for them to get in and we can split it four ways. And, you know, Autumn was like, but you need the money. You need the money. She might need the money, but um, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that alone. Like, you guys can tell me what you think about that. Should she split them? Should they split it four ways? Well, technically, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. So this is my personal opinion. You guys can chime in in the comment section and let me know. But I don't feel like they should split it four ways. When you think about it, nobody's coming. I love Mercedes, but people are not coming to see the Mercedes. They're not coming to see the Mercedes experience. Well, actually, when you think about it, I have to think about it this way. Because when you think about it, I don't know if they should split it four ways because I don't believe that people are coming to the pink to see Roulette and Whisper. The biggest names that they might be coming to see, Keyshawn and Mercedes. They want to see their Mercedes experience and they want to see Miss Keyshawn. So if anybody's going to split the money, honestly, it should be Keyshawn and Mercedes and whatever you know and then roulette and whisper they get they they get they scrilla you know from dancing so yeah I, if i said it out loud I, I think that's what could happen so we see the paint so the paint is getting ready for the re, re, re opening you guys so remember they can only open at 50 percent right so when we see the paint baby the paint was just it was a line of niggas outside of the club right and who else is there? Lauren. So she's like, uh-uh. If y'all niggas go in that club, y'all got to wear y'all mask. Fine, lady. Let us get into the motherfucking club. And then we find out that it's $60 at the door. I'm like, damn. That's a lot of goddamn money. And Uncle Clifford is telling people like, hey, y'all can only go in when people leave the club and when if niggas get kicked out of the club, right? $60 fucking dollars? And this is the pandemic when niggas didn't really have money like that. Like most people were losing their jobs, you know, but I think at this time also, this is probably around this time people were getting them stimmies because Uncle Clifford said to Lauren, like, hey, Lauren. So, um, yeah, girl, if you let us go up to, you know, um, at least, you know, 75 percent, I know you're trying to blow that stimmy. You know, I let you blow this. I let you in for free. You blow that stimmy. And I also throw Big L in on as well. Big L said, when did I become a hoe? And she was like, ooh, you kind of fine. Okay, y'all can go to 75%, but once again, all y'all niggas got to wear your motherfucking mask. So everybody got to wear their mask, but they are able to get into the paint at 75%, you know. So then Uncle Clifford, she goes into the locker room and she tells all the girls, you know, basically, get your asses out there and make this money. So, <coughs> you hear that? She's like, wait a minute. Who the fuck just coughed? Who was it that coughed? And it was Toy. Toy, get your motherfucking ass out of here. You the reason that my grandmother is in the hospital. So, Toy is like, I ain't the one that gave your grandmother. She said, how is she? She's dying. She said, get the fuck out. Get out, Toy. Get out. So, Toy is like, I ain't the one that gave your grandmother the Rona. She says, yes, the fuck. it was you. Toy, yeah, baby, it was you. It was you, Toy. You were the one that's been caught. Because remember, Toy has been saying that she had allergies. Now, nah, bitch, that was the Rona. So Uncle Clifford says, get out. So Toy is like, so she gets, so she got to leave, right? So then somebody else coughed. She was like, who the fuck was that? You cough again. That's your ass. <laughs> so Uncle Cliff is not playing with them, right? So Nineveh. Nineveh comes down to the locker room. Well, actually, Nineveh's already in the locker room. So she comes up to Uncle Clifford. <coughs> oh, excuse me, y'all. And she shows Uncle Clifford um, a, a, a live. That little <coughs> Damn, something in my throat. Like old girl see it. She says, she said, she says, she was just cleaning her throat out. So Nineveh showed Uncle Clifford this live that little murder was doing with Tina Snow, right? So. They kicking out the they kicking off the tour at the pink, right? So look little, little murder and Tina Snow, they pull up to the pink, right? Why do we wait today? Like episode nine to get Megan the Stallion? But I'm happy to see Megan nonetheless. I was so happy to see her. 
So also we see at the paint, Main and his crew. So when um, Lil Murder and Tina Snow pulled up, they was like, you know, he ain't really claiming that he took out Pico, right? <clears throat> but they still know, they still have a feeling that it was Lil Murder that took out Pico. God dang Murder. Like I, like, I think that's going to come back to bite Murder in the ass in the finale. I believe that's one thing that's going to come back to haunt Murder is taking out Pico. I just have a strange feeling about that. Because you guys remember what I've been saying all season long, that they've been foreshadowing death for sure. Death has been foreshadowed this entire season, and I think death is knocking at our door. I told you guys I didn't think that death was just ending with, you know, Big Teak. If it's not death, somebody's going to be really hurt. Somebody's going to be, I mean, it's going to be near death for somebody. And the two people that's coming up in my mind, like when I, when I think about it, like who are two people that I feel are at death's door? Murder and Keyshawn. Those are the two people that I'm, those are the two people that are in the focal point of my brain when it comes to death. It is murder and it's, um, it's Keyshawn. So, when they showed up to the club, you know, we see Murda and Tina, they down there with, in the dressing room. So Uncle Clifford pulls Murda to the side and like, who the fuck are you to tell me how to run my motherfucking club? And LaMurda's like, you never look a gift horse in the mouth. And she was like, you better get away from me before I suck your dick. And Murda says, not before you get yours. I was like, oh, y'all just being vulgar and nasty in the, in the pink. Oh my God. I was like, oh, say more. <laughs> you guys, I don't have an issue with that. I'm like, okay. So Uncle Clifford, she tells Murder, I don't want a repeat of Murder Night. And he was like, we ain't going to never let this down. Absolutely not. We're not going to let this down. Like, um, do you remember? I mean, do you remember Murder Night? Like, you remember that shit and what happened at Murder Night? So then we see Toya. So Toy, she's outside of the club crime. So... Whisper is with her, right? So Roulette comes in and she's like, what the hell wrong with her? And, you know, that's when um, Whisper tells Roulette that, you know, Uncle Clifford told her she can't dance tonight because, you know, she coughed. And she was like, I didn't give his, her, her grandmother the Rona. And Whisper was like, yeah, baby, the wind said you did. <laughs> we all know you did, Toy. We all know you did. And um, Toy, it's fine, girl. I mean... Not really, it's not really fine, but it's semi-fine. So, Whisper gave Roulette a look, and I was like, girl, what the fuck was that look? Now, you guys remember that she did take that guy's car, and it was a bus down, right? She told Duffy to bust down. So, she's walking through, and she just got all this expensive shit on her. So, she then hands Toy some money. And I was like, girl, what the fuck is that? And she's like, I'm going to give it back to you. She said, that ain't a loan, baby. That's your pay. Toy said, is this what I think it is? I was like, yeah, baby, I think it is what you think it is. They finna hold you out. They finna hold you out. Now, let me backtrack just a little bit. So, when Tina and Lil Murda was talking, because she came out, she's like, is this the pimp? And Uncle Cliff was like, I am not a pimp. But, you know, sometimes I do like to wear a track suit and a, you know, a, and a do-rag. So they're talking and then some, I, I forgot who it was, they came and told Uncle Clifford like, hey, there is somebody in the paradise room for you. And, you know, Lamar's like, when you start getting customers in the paradise room, Uncle Clifford basically was like, mind your business. This is business. This is business. So she walks off to the paradise room, right? And Lamar was looking like, who the fuck want my bitch? And... And, you know, Megan grabbed him and like, uh-uh, come on, we gotta, we gotta rehearse and stuff. So, when Uncle Clifford went to the Paradise Room, who's in the Paradise Room? It is Corbin. So, Corbin is wanting Uncle Clifford, so she has a, so he has a gift for her, right? And Uncle Clifford opens it and it's a whip. I was like, ooh, C Corbin, child. You know, that is one thing. I mean, I'm, I don't judge people's kinks, but baby, I don't know. I mean, I like a little bit of pain, but being whipped? Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
So Corbin asked Uncle Clifford how much did Autumn put down at the auction, right? So Uncle Clifford said she put down $250,000. So he going to give Uncle Clifford that $250,000. I was, and Uncle Clifford was like, you sure got a lot of money to burn, Corbin. I was like, Corbin sure does have a lot of money to blow. How much money did you get from your daddy? Like, shit, you got two... You got $250,000 to blow on getting your ass whipped and Corbin took off all his clothes and then he turned around and we see his back. I was like, God damn. Jesus. His back was, I mean, he had webs all on his back. I was like, I just don't. I don't get the fascination. I don't get, I don't understand that because I don't like blood. One thing I don't do is blood and bottle any kind of bodily fluids. I don't, I don't do bodily fluids. I'm not into that. I'm not into spit, blood, piss, or feces. I'm not into that. I'm not really into that. That's not really my thing. No, sh no shade to anybody who is into it. I'm just it's. It's just not for me. Just not for JB. So, Uncle Clifford, she obliged him. And she whopped and she whopped and she popped his ass. So, then we see Autumn. So, Autumn took went to the VIP room where Corbin, not Corbin, but where Andre was, right? So, she was like, she, you know, she's been trying to make her way to the, over there to him. I was like, girl, you gonna tell him you're pregnant? When we gonna tell him that? <laughs> You're pregnant, Heffa. So, Wayne, not Wayne. Yeah, well, no, Wayne, not Wayne. Why do I keep wanting to say Wayne? Corbin came back to the VIP room. I was like, um, so nobody notices the back of his shirt. Nobody's gonna say anything about the back of his shirt because his shirt is blue. And when he put, I mean, you could literally see that he was still currently bleeding when he came into that, that VIP room. I was like, um, so we're just gonna overlook this. I was like, okay, I, I mean, I guess we really overlooked that. So they're gonna get ready to go back to the headquarters eventually so that they can watch the polls. So after that, we see Duffy. So Duffy and Roulette, they meet up, they kind of, you know, catch each other. And, you know, R Roulette got a lot of mouth, right? Duffy in this scene was able to shut her up by, you know, sticking his hands in her, you know, her nether region. I was like, and he went, I mean, he went deep. I was like, oh, he going deep. She couldn't say nothing. I was like, so that's what'll get her quiet. The white boy. The white boy. So then after that, we see Andre. So Andre, he got on stage. Now, we notice in the, in, the, in the crowd, we see this dude that was outside of the pink earlier trying to get in. We see him up in, a, in like a little DJ, in, up there near the DJ booth, right? And then we see Maine, he down below him. So Maine looks up and gives him a look. And the man was like, but then he, he moved. I was like, why would you do that? But it made sense to me later when we got into the episode. I was like, okay, that made sense. That was a, a cue. I figured it was a cue for him. But it feels like this guy is on murder's, with one of mur is, is in murder's crew and not in Maine's crew. And I'm going to ask you guys to, if you guys understood this, and we'll discuss it in a few minutes. So Andre got on stage. He made a, a speech to the, to the crowd. And then that's when him and Otta met up in the hallway. And he's, you know, he thanks her. He tells her he owes her. And she was, he was trying to kiss her. She's like, it, it won't look right as the mayor of Chuckalisa kissing his mistress. Girl, so then he was like, you know, he asked her if she thought about leasing. She says, well, that would mean that I would have to stay. Girl, you know, you're going to stay. Stop playing, Autumn. Stop playing. So then we get the performance from Tina. So Tina's on stage. She performing. So Uncle Clifford actually came out and introduced her. He first, so he he started it out by introducing, you know, Keyshawn is gonna be on the stage, Roulette gonna be on the stage, and so is Whisper. And then Tina comes out and she starts performing, right? 
So then we see uh, Mercedes. So Mercedes is in the crowd, and Maine was like, damn, she danced like it's her last dance. And Mercedes was like, I think it is. So then he says, why are you not up on stage? And she's like, you know, sometimes a bitch just want to sit back and enjoy the art. So then Tina Snow, she's performing, and then she bring out, you know, Lil Murder. So Lil Murder get on the stage, and he, he, you know, he going in, and he doing his thing, right? So then, remember, I told you guys a few minutes ago that the guy that Maine looked up at and gave him a little head nod or something, well, they went up to him, and they basically started to fight with him. Because, again, I believe he's a part of Murder's crew, but he was in on it with Maine, so the fight broke out, right? So then, like I said, Murder is on the stage, and... Bitch, Megan to said, fuck this shit. And she took off running. Keyshawn got caught in the melee because niggas were trying to come up on the stage to get to murder, right? And Keyshawn got caught up in the melee. So when Keyshawn got caught up in the melee, Diamond comes up and he moving niggas out the right, left and right. He pushing niggas and he got his, he, he got his, he got his gun on him, right? So he gets Keyshawn and he gets Keyshawn out of there. He's like, are you okay? And baby, what did Keyshawn do? She went up to him and straight up kissed him. I was like, um, how far are y'all from the DJ booth? That was my first question. I'm like, can the DJ see y'all from the DJ booth? And when I thought about that, the exact minute that I thought, can the DJ see y'all, the DJ saw them. I was like, oh, this is not going to end well. This ain't going to end well with Big Bone. Because Big Bone gives me that the bitch knows how to fight. Big Bone gives me she's a dirty a dirty fighter too. I don't trust not a damn thing from no goddamn Big Bone. So we see Uncle Clifford and Murder. They in, they in the room and Uncle Clifford is just talking to, trying to calm Murder down. Like, what the fuck? And like them niggas coming after me. Like, I done already put one of their niggas in the ground basically. And, and Uncle Clifford's like, wait, 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 wait. Is that what I helped you cover up that night? And Uncle and you know, Lil Murder was like, nah, that ain't what you helped me cover up. So she tells him, like, when you go on tour with Tina Snow, you need to take Diamond with it. He says, but she says, but you can't take his fawn. What did she call him? His fine caramel something, his fine caramel ass or something like that. So Murder eventually left, right? And she's just kick, kicking shit. And when she kicked the box, what happened? The drugs that Duffy and Big L had been bringing to the club, she found them. And she was like, what the? So she went there with Big L and she threw the drugs. And she's like, Big L, I told you I didn't want to be a part of that shit. And Big L was like, you know, um, Big L said he was just holding it. And she was like, that's how it typically happens, Big L. And, she, you know, she went off on a tirade. Oh, I did forget to mention something earlier in the review. About, about Mercedes when she got mad she asked Uncle Clifford if Keyshawn was better than her and Uncle Clifford was telling her you know she needs to find a new dream I forgot to mention that sorry you guys just came to me so um Uncle Clifford not Uncle Clifford but Big L was talking to Uncle Clifford and she was telling Uncle Clifford like you know I've been trying to get you in on this like you could have been you could you know basically if Uncle Clifford had gotten on the drugs with her and with him she wouldn't be in the situation that she's currently in where she could she could be she could have been a queen but instead she's a bitch being ran by another bitch and he tells her that autumn is going to sell her empire which i do agree with big l on that one and um big l says well the bitch can't sell if she's dead i'm like god dang it how many more times are we gonna mention unliving i'm like damn unliving autumn how many more times are we going to just elude to just taking the bitch out? Like, I mean, we just keep saying, take the bitch out. Mm, mm -mm. So Uncle Clifford tells Big L that he is fighting. Big L's like, girl, fuck that. I quit. So then when Big L left, Uncle Clifford, she got a phone call from, you know, the, um, the hospital. Now, I don't know what they said, but we can kind of assume that maybe Grandmother Ernestine ain't in the best condition right about now, which... Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I forgot to mention that. Grandmother Ernestine, you guys. I forgot to mention that. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about these things that I literally forgot to mention. So earlier in the episode, Grandmother Ernestine, she's she's still in the hospital, right? So 
I don't know if I think it might have been a nurse who was trying to give grandmother Ernestine some water and she flipped out on the nurse because she you guys know she's hallucinating and she's picturing her daughter so she's telling them fuck no 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 and then another thing that I forgot to mention while grandmother Ernestine was in the hospital baby uncle Clifford and murder was having sex and she said uh -uh -uh, don't pull the lace front so what threw me was they were getting ready for breakfast and when they were getting ready for breakfast I'm like y'all fucking over the table China so Uncle Clifford at one point she asked Little Murder if she's going on tour with Tina right and Uncle Little Murder says that he doesn't know and you know Uncle Clifford she says well how does it feel to be more than just hood famous and you know Little Murder said it's scary because people think that they know him but they don't know him and Murder then says to Uncle Clifford that he doesn't want to leave her and she says don't worry about me and then you know Uncle Clifford not Uncle Clifford Little Murder tells Uncle Clifford not to you know worry about Dorona because Dorona not gonna take out Miss Ernestine. You guys, I'm praying that Dorona doesn't take out Miss Ernestine because I'm gonna lose it. So at the end of the episode, we see Mercedes. So Mercedes found Lil Murder in another room, and he was listening to some music, right? And she says, "What are you listening to?" She says, "The last time I saw you, you, you was you know basically perpetrating the fraud. You was a little perpetrating ass nigga." And he asked her, like, why didn't you dance? She, she says, you know, she's just scared of falling. And they connect with each other, right? And, you know, he asked her to listen to his music. And she was like, you know, what if I don't like this shit? What if I give you, a, you know, some, tell you something that you don't like? He says it's cool. He wants to hear her opinion, you know, from one legend to, a ne to, to, the, not to the next. So, yeah. Um... That's the end. that's actually the episode, you guys. Um, I think I got everything. I'm trying to look at my notes to make sure I got everything. Yeah, that, I got everything. So, um, the finale, you guys. The finale is next week, and I feel like this finale is gonna be hell because if at the end of the episode, remember last week that Pico said he had a baby on the way, right? So the the baby mama, she is saying she know that little murder did that shit. I'm like, oh, this is just not going to end the way that I want it to. I feel like my boy is going to be in some shit. But um, that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. I do feel like it's going to be some shit with Big Bone and Keyshawn and Diamond. It's going to be some shit next week. But that's all I got. Like I said, if I miss anything, we can definitely discuss it in the comment section, you guys. Um, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications, you guys. Share the video. And until the next time, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, you guys. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.